In this video, I'm going to be going through how to get the best hyperparameters of a of a neural network. So, uh, with this notebook, there's there's a whole bunch of I suppose uh, un well, not completely unrelated stuff, but uh, not related to this particular lesson. So, once you open this notebook, I want you to run everything up until uh, where it says best hyperparameters. Okay, so this is what we're going to start from. In Keras. There's this thing called Keras Regressor, and grid, uh, and from Scikit-Learn, we're going to get this thing called Grid Search uh, Cross Validation. So the the question that we're going to be answering is, how many nodes do we need, and how many layers do we need? So for each node, do I need 30, 30 nodes, forty nodes, and so on? That's that's really the question that we're going to be uh, asking. So um, in order to do that. Uh, we're really going to be using this thing called cross-validation, right? So if you don't know what cross-validation is, go uh, please do go and uh, click this link. It's a very important concept in machine learning, or I suppose statistical learning. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's let's move on. So I want to uh, create this function called create model. Okay. So uh, we're going to create the Keras neural network thing, which is going to be a general neural net. So what I mean by that is, uh, of course, I'm going to start with model equals sequential, but the lay number of layers is going to be a variable, right? And so is the activation for each layer. Okay, so so let's see what we've done in here. So the first layer, the first layer always is always a bit different in Keras because we need to specify how many input dimensions there are. Okay, so it, it's going to be train x dot shape. Okay, so the the number of x's that we have. Which, which we get from here, and then the number of nodes. So over here, we, we see for each layer, there's a, bear, uh, there's a number of nodes, which comes in through this. So I'm expecting an array which specifies, first of all, how many layers there are, and in each layer, how many nodes there are. So I'll, I'll get to that in a bit. And so, so each node is, uh, is added, and then it gives the activation. For each other layer, it I go models or add dense nodes and then the same activation. Okay, so I'm not changing the activation throughout throughout the model. And of course, because uh, we're dealing with the regression problem right now, I'm going to be saying dense one as the last one, and I'll leave the optimizer as at a delta. Okay, you can you can change this later on. You can in fact uh, you can indeed send this as a parameter if you want to, but for, for this lesson I'm going to leave it as a, a constant at a delta. Okay, and the loss is going to be mean squared error. Okay, so we're going to be using the wrapper called Keras Regressor, which we imported over here, keras.wrappers.scikit-learn. Okay, we, we're going to put that in, and then the build function is whatever function that we did over here. Okay, in this, in my case, it's called create model, and I want, I don't want this to be printing every single thing when we fit in the model. So because of that, I'm going to be putting verb, verb is equal zero. Okay, and so yeah, so I say model is equal to the Keras wrapper for this. All right, so here we go. Here are the parameters that I'm going to be playing around with. So I'm going to be playing around with three different types of layers. So the first, the first neural network will only have one hidden layer, and in that hidden layer, there will be 30 nodes. The second one, um, I will have two layers, and the first one, there'll be 40, the second one will be 20. Okay, keep in mind that we want a pyramidal, pyramid kind of structure. So in this particular case, I'll just show you what train x looks like. Okay, so train x, oops, train x dot shape looks like this. Okay, so it has 16,000 training examples, but 59 x variables, right? And then my train y is, in, in this case, is, is the count, but that is really not important over here. So because it's 59 and the last layer is 1, I want something in the middle. So 30, so it goes 59, 30, 1. And then it goes 59, 40, 21. So you can see it's, it's, it's almost like a, a pyramid structure. Okay, so 59 is close to 60. That's why I chose that, these particular numbers. So 60, 45, 30, 15, and the last layer will be 1. Okay, I hope, I hope that makes sense. So I'm trying three different, uh, I suppose, architectures over here. And I'm trying two different activation functions. So the first one is sigmoid. The second is ReLU. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through all possible combinations. So I'm going to be trying sigma sigmoid with 30. I'm going to be trying ReLU with 30, sigmoid with four, uh, this this uh, network, and ReLU with this network, and so on. So there's six possible combinations in, in in here. And the parameter grid, 
Okay, so the parameter get grid, I'm going to be saying its layers and the activations are going to be these things that I'm going to be trying, okay, which will be inputs to this. But then I'm going to be specifying batch size and epochs as well. Okay, so batch size and epochs, if you notice, haven't exactly gone into this create model function. But the thing is, when with uh, with Keras model for model dot fit batch size and epochs are a standard uh, standard things that you put in, right? So if you don't specify them, they have default values. But I'm going to be trying um, 128 and 256 as two different sizes. So we had six possible combinations from here. Multiply that by two, so we have 12 different uh, combinations that we're going to be going through. The epochs for this particular thing, I'm going to be set, setting this as a constant 30. Okay, so I hope you understand what I'm doing here. So I'm going through all the possible combinations and then looking at the cross validation error to, to see which, which model is my best. Okay, so that's what's happening over there. And then you get grid result. So you go grid.fit. So remember, grid is a scikit learn. So grid search CV is a scikit learn thing. And then you can go grid.fit. Okay, so and in there it will run the Keras, um, uh, the Keras neural networks in there. Okay, so I'm not going to run. I'm not going to actually run this one because it, it took about five minutes to run. Okay, because remember there's twelve possible things that I'm running. But once once I ran this, I get this uh, this thing. So the I can go grid result dot best score. Okay, to get the actual score, and then the best parameters is is really what we probably want to look at. Okay, so in this particular case, it's saying the ReLU is the best activation function. It's saying 128 is the best, is the optimal batch size. Okay, so not 256, it, it, it chooses a smaller one out of the two. But as, okay, so epochs, there's only one choice, which is 30. And the layers out of this thing, it chose the, this, chose the last network. So 45, 30, 15 as, as the best network. Okay, and finally, one thing that we can do is we we can spit out the scores, okay, and of course, because we're doing cross validation, you, you should probably look at standard deviation of that as well. Um, and then last is the parameters. So, just just a few comments on that. Um, now, with scoring, I really had to specify this neg negative mean squared error, okay. If if you don't, it will actually give me the highest mean squared error because, unfortunately, the way that scikit learns structured, it gives the one with the highest score. As the best model, okay, and and in this case we want negative mean squared to be uh, increased. We want mean squared error to be decreased, but negative mean squared error to be increased. And uh, by default, grid search CV does three cross uh, three fold cross validation. You should probably look that up, but I'm pretty sure that that's the case. All right. So uh, so yeah, so we get these errors, and it it chooses. And uh, keep in mind, so it's all negative because of negative mean squared error. It chooses this one, this model over here, to be the best model. Okay, so I, I can, like, it's actually spat it out over here specifically saying what the best uh, parameters are. And now, uh, I think what we really want to do, so th th this is all good, but we re what we really want to do is predict using what we got over here. So, fortunately, grid has a predict function. Okay, so you all you gotta do is grid.predict, test x, and then it'll give you a predicted y value. And then what I've gone ahead is just go on ahead and because I do have the test values, I can I can check the what the squared error is, and it turns out to be 0.12, which is fairly close to the 0.13 that I got over here. So that's it for this uh, this tutorial. So if you have any questions or comments, please do let me know. But um, I will stop it there. Thank you.